Hello friends, this is Sharmi from the Amateur Gardener. Uh, today, uh, I'll be doing a few uh, things in the garden. One of the things is trying to set up um, a garden bed. This is uh, a shade garden bed under my magnolia tree. It already has some plants. I did plant uh, anemone and ranunculus there uh, last um, fall and actually even the fall before. I planted some and then I supplemented some more uh, last fall and they had a beautiful show this spring. Um, they bloom really early spring for us uh, here in uh, zone 9 in the Houston area. So right now they are done and I'm cutting them back. I won't be pulling up the corms. I'll just be leaving them there and hopefully I can add some more and get a beautiful show again next spring. Um, but now I'm going to plant some uh, like spreading anemones. Uh, I will, uh, as I go, I'm going to show you what I'm planting there. And I'm also going to plant some cast iron plant. Um, and this is also meant for like shade areas. First of all, I'm going to add some soil there uh, just to uh, kind of top off the area. And um, let's, let me take you along and let me show you what I'm doing. This is the area that I'm going to dress up a little bit with uh, some garden soil. Uh, first, there are some anemones here. Uh, and then we have this beautiful uh, Peruvian lily that's in bloom now. Love the contrast. Uh, I had a ligularia, like a leopard plant or farfugium. Um, I, this one broke off from my original one. I planted it here and it took. Um, I may be moving it somewhere in the back. Um, also have uh, an edgeworthia there, uh, there uh, that I planted this, uh, I think it was uh, earlier this winter or something that I planted there. Uh, this one is just a filler, um, a kale, but there is a uh, alocasia that I planted here. Uh, hopefully it'll take the, the leaf is actually bicolor. The top is like bright green and the bottom is like brown or like more coppery colored. Uh, I also have uh, Rodea japonica here, uh, there. And then I have a lot of uh, uh, creeping phlox. I think it's purple beauty uh, and uh, it can spread and slowly a little bit and I like that. And this was the area where I had the seasonal anemones and the ranunculus, which are done now. Okay, let's get going. If I look up, you can see this area is under a huge uh, magnolia tree, fully shaded. And then in the front, it is partially open and then it has a huge plum tree here. And there is leads to my other shade garden, which is here, um, which has uh, some camellia, some uh, carex, uh, some, what is it called? hostas, uh, some, a few other things. And most importantly, my big daddy hydrangea, which is coming into bloom for the first time this year. I planted it last spring and it didn't bloom last year, but there you see it. And then a bunch of camellias and other, um, oh, then I got a uh, few other things that I've planted here. We go through a lot of these plants in my garden tour, so I'm not going through them uh, again. But, and then on top, you can see the huge canopy of this plum tree. Uh, actually, this is a two-in-one tree. This is plum uh, together with uh, apricot. I can see one there. I get a decent crop of plums from this tree. And this one is also starting to bear fruit this year. There are some I can see. Uh, so let's see how that goes. On the other side of this bed are my palm trees. This is this bed is literally in full east, full sun. So I do have some astrolitas here all over. I have uh, uh, some uh, budlia that is blooming, and then I also have some uh, bobo hydrangeas that are doing more than awesome here. That's one, and this is the second one. And there's the Jetropha. Uh, there's a variegated uh, Solomon seal that I expect and want it to take over this part. And then 
On the other side, we have some Brigadoon uh, St. John's wort that I also wanted to take over this part, which it's doing. Have a salvia here, which I planted, I think, a long time ago. It's doing well. Love the estrelita. Oh, and of course, there is a petunia here that I didn't plant. It's self-seeded from something I had before. I love the color. I hardly ever fertilize it, and it does quite well. Okay, so let me go through the plants that I'm going to plant. First of all, I have a cast iron plant. I picked up at Clearance in Lowe's. It is called Tiny Tank Aspidistra. It's a dwarf cast iron plant. It's going to go in the back. And then together with it are also going to go these anemones. These are Japanese anemones. These are from Proven Winners. Um, that's the picture. And this is Fall in Love Sweetly is the name. And I have three of them. And they should, uh, they can take full to part sun, but I'm going to plant them in part shade. So it doesn't even get like three hours of sun. So they should do well. They are right under the uh, magnolia tree. And uh, they are good from zones four to eight, but you know, we have zone nine. I have planted lots of plants that are good from zones four to eight in part shade, and they do really well for me. Okay, and other than that, I'm going to plant this one, which is Sun King Aurelia. This is uh, good from zones three to nine, so it's a big coverage. It does best in part shade, but uh, I'm uh, going to plant it also in part shade. And it grows to a three by three in size. Okay, so let's get going. Okay, so getting a look finally at what was done today. This is the bed. Let me step back. I have a rock there. I can move it sometime. But kind of added some new soil. This is the Sun King Aurelia. That is going to nicely fill up that spot. And then that's the Colocasia going back. Those are the three Japanese anemones. And in between, uh, we have this Edgeworthia. It should nicely fill up. I've left about a little more than a foot, maybe like a foot and a half between the Edgeworthia and uh, the anemones. The Edgeworthia should go taller. And then on this corner, I have this uh, dwarf uh, cast iron plant. In front, we have some seasonal anemones. We have this lovely blooming um, Peruvian lily. And then this one actually took, I didn't think it would take. This is a Farfugium, an offshoot from my other one. This is the Crispata variety. I'm going to probably take it from here and put it a little farther, like around this spot. Okay. So that's it. It's a small area, but it's uh, in a lot of shade. Um, maybe this side gets a little more sun, maybe like two to three hours of sun. But otherwise, it's a kind of a shade garden. Okay, and uh, that's it. Before I take off, I have to give you a look of my hydrangea alley. Clusters are getting bigger and bigger. Let's call it like bigger, better, fuller. I am going to still try my experiment next year about uh, seeing about working on whether I can turn this to a more purple or blue color. I guess the amount I gave it this year wasn't enough. This is another one. Let me give you a view from this one. Let me give you a view from this side. There it is. I have plans for this area. I'm going to take out some of these salvias. Um, 
I'm sure they're going to sell they self seed readily so they are going to self seed so I'm not so worried about them but I have plans for this side of the garden other than just salvias okay it should come to fruition probably next weekend we'll see the hibiscus is actually now about maybe five feet across it's huge it gets monstrous and uh, you can see some of the buds are getting ready to open up so that was a little video about creating a small uh, area of uh, a shade garden so if you all did like the video do uh, hit a like and do subscribe to my channel if you find it uh, useful or entertaining in any way and would like to see more about my garden as it progresses uh, um, otherwise, I'll see you in my next video. Bye-bye.